Hey, physical science students, this is Dr. B, and we are working on a pilot interactive. Our pilot interactive is called Intro to Motion Graphs, the Ping Pong Ball Bazooka. So let's check out what's going on with this Ping Pong Ball Bazooka, and we're going to take some measurements today and make some graphs. Okay, let's see what's going on here with this uh, bazooka. I'm going to hit play. Boom! Ping pong ball comes out of a vacuum cannon and uh, the pop can is destroyed. So what actually went on there? We can analyze that motion. And so that's what we're going to do in this lab. So first of all, we're going to get a ruler here. The ruler is going to help us take some measurements. We're going to back up this film here and we're going to just step it forward a little bit at a time until we get the ping pong ball just coming out. Oops, just sneak it back in there. Just a little bit. So here's the full first frame where the ball is visible. I'm going to put the zero right on the ball. Can't really get back any further. Oh, nope, it's way too fast. So I'll put the ball back in the can in here. It's the beautiful thing about playing things in reverse. And we'll work with it just when we can start to see it. <clears throat> So if we look at this ruler here, the, the zero is at the ping pong ball and the pop can is at 52. So during this time, the ball is gonna travel about 52 centimeters. So we use the ruler to measure the distance from the right edge of the ball to the left edge of the pop can. So we can put in 52. Let's submit our answer. Okay, great work. Now let's use the stopwatch to measure the time. Click the stopwatch icon to bring up the stopwatch tool. We'll look at that in a minute. Advance the video to the frame you would like to use for T0 and click reset to set, set the stopwatch to zero. Now we can use the stopwatch to measure how long it takes for the ball to move from the muzzle of the ping pong ball bazooka to the pop can. So remember, if we want to compute speed, which, uh, and uh, we know the velocity because we know direction for this ping pong ball, we need two things to compute speed. We need the distance, we just measured that with the ruler, and we need the time. So we're gonna measure the average velocity or the average speed. Um, that's of course velocity without direction. Um, and we need distance and time. Let's go find out the time. So we figured out the distance. Now we are going to look at the stopwatch. We're going to reset it to zero. I think I can move this up here. And we're going to advance the video until the ball hits the pop can. About right there. So it's 0 0.00269 seconds. So let's write that down. Let's see if I can copy it. Nope, I can't. 0 0.00269. 0 0.00269. 0 if we count our places, that's 
tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, to 269 hundred thousandths of a second. That's pretty fast. All right, we, so now we have both the distance in centimeters and the time in seconds. So we're on our way to measuring speed. This section walks us through how to use the data table and the graph. There's nothing you need to complete in this section, but we should reference it as we're working out. The first step is to add titles to your data table. We're gonna make a graph of position versus time. Remember, we've looked at, um, when we looked at moving man in class, um, we looked at position versus time. Moving man is a FET um, simulation, and I will put the link in the comments or the description. In order to get position versus time, our position or our distance in this case that we're measuring with the ruler is in centimeters. So we're going to have the computer uh, convert it to meters for us automatically. So we are um, we're using the formula here to get this extra column that you see up here that automatically converts centimeters to meters. And I'll show you how that works here in just a second. We're going to gradually advance the video a little bit at a time and we're going to measure for at least 15 different positions. So we're going to build up a position versus time graph for the, for the ping pong ball as it zooms across the screen and is on its way to hitting the pop cam. Then we're gonna make a graph, choose a line of best fit, and remember in um, position versus time graphs, that slope of the line, you can see the line appearing here uh, in the video just a second. Um, that line, the slope of that line is gonna be the speed for the ping pong ball. So let's collect data and make a graph. So we have a table here. I put in an extra column by just saying uh, insert column right. I'm going to get a formula for that column. I'm going to say change column formula. I'm going to select position in centimeters and I'm going to divide by 100. I have another, uh, an extra X in there. I'm going to cancel here. I'll just, there we go. So as I put in a, um, the number of centimeters, which look, looks like one, two, three here, I'll put 3.0 because we can estimate that's tenths place. It should automatically be converted into meters. And there it is. It's three hundredths of a meter because one centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. Let's look at the time. Um, we're gonna call this, well, here, let's not have it zeroed. Let's put it back. There, the time is zero. 0 0.01654. So 0 0.01654. That's our time. So we're going to continue to take measurements until we have about 15 measurements. We're going to advance this just a little bit at a time. This one looks like 10.9. So I'll say 10.9. And that happened at 0 0.01692 seconds. And notice my 10.9 centimeters automatically got converted to meters here. So I'm just going to continue to advance the video here, take as many measurements as I can get in. I can move my stopwatch back up here. 
looks like 15, 16, 17, 18, 18.6, I'm going to say. And the time I took that measurement I'm getting from the stopwatch right up here is 0 0.01731. So I'm going to continue taking measurements and writing down the time until I have a whole bunch of measurements. And then we're going to make a graph. So I'll let all of you make your measurements and um, pause the video and then we'll get back together and make the graph. So I've taken time, I've measured the ping pong ball distance and I've taken the time off the stopwatch for the ball going all the way across the screen and I just, I kept measuring it until it went off the ruler. So I got 12 measurements and they automatically went into a graph. Look at that, that's pretty cool. So here's another time, um, here is a way to determine, uh, we're gonna analyze our graph. In this section, we're gonna use our graph to figure out some key concepts. We're gonna look at the box below our graph and check if the equation, uh, check if the equation for your line of best fits indicates X and Y. So, oops, I forgot to put a, a, cur a line on there. So let's go to curve fits and let's go to linear. And here's our line of best fit. So this is the part that they were talking about. Um, remember y equals mx plus b? That's exactly what we're doing here. We're finding the slope of the line where, remember y equals mx plus b, the m is the slope. And right here, it's going to be the a. And b is going to be the intercept. So we're using the slope and intercept formula. So describe the shape of your graph. Does the line of best fit go through all the points? Let's look. Does it go through every single point? Now, well, looks like that point, not so much, not so much, not so much. It looks like it's kind of an average of all the points. So let's put that here. No, mine is an average of all the points. And that's basically what a line of best fit is. It's not a, a dot to dot. It's a kind of figure out where, if we were going to draw a straight line, where, where is the best place that kind of makes as many points uh, kind of closest to the graph as possible. So we're going to focus on the motion of the ping pong ball before it collided with the can. So let's review the video and find the time when the ping pong ball hit the can. Next, find that time on your graph and click each point that shows a time after the ping pong ball collided with the can. Those should now look like an X. So those we don't really want to be part of our line of best fit. We don't want to try to configure our line to best fit um, all the points, including the points after it hit the can, because uh, the speed of the ball probably changed after it hit the can. So if we really want to just get speed as it was traveling, um, we need to take out some of the data here in our line of best fit. So we have to go all the way back up to our video and back it up a little bit and figure out the time so anything after 0.1923 seconds is after it hit the can. So that is, so that's the last one, two, three, four points we have to make into X's. So let's click on that one, let's click on that one, 
click on that one. And I knew it was the last four points because I looked at the video, I figured out the time, and then I looked at the table and took out um, that many points at the end. So describe the shape of the line of best fit. Does it go through all the points? Yet. Almost, except it looks like I did a pretty bad job here measuring this one. Or maybe it's just an anomaly. Maybe there was an air current or something. Either I did a bad job measuring or uh, there could be something interesting in the data. So we're going to, I'm just going to say no one is off the line. So, the letter A represents the slope of your line of best fit. Pay attention to the number and unit. Take a look at the box below your graph to find your slope. Let's find the slope of our line here. So A is going to be, oops, 2.04 times 10 to the fourth centimeters per second. So we can come down here and fill in 2.04 times 10 to the fourth centimeters per second. And if I follow the directions in the scientific notation here, that's telling me to move the decimal point over four places. So when I move that decimal place over four places, I get 20,400 centimeters per second. So now let's turn your let's turn our slope into a for every statement. So I'm just going to write it out. The goes up and I'm just going to put some blanks in here for every one blank and then we'll go figure out what we need to put in there of blank. So the quantity on the vertical axis well, let's go up to the see the quantity on the vertical axis. That's centimeters. So let's go put in centimeters in our sentence here. The centimeter go up. And that's the next part, the next blank we have to fill in, slope value with the vertical units. So the slope value with the vertical units is centimeters. Goes, oh, goes up 20,000 centimeters, 20,400 centimeters for every one, the horizontal unit, horizontal unit is seconds, for every one second, of time. So the let's say the position in centimeters, that's a better way to put it. The position in centimeters goes up 20,400 centimeters for every one second of time. Now that seems like a lot of centimeters, that'd be like 20.4 meters. But considering that this whole clip, we didn't even measure one whole second. We only measured maybe, uh, let's look at the difference in time here. Uh, it was uh, just about a one hundredth of a second. The whole graph is one hundredth of a second. So that doesn't seem outrageous when you, when you consider that 
we have just a tiny amount of time that we're measuring. So let, let's look at our intercept. The intercept is where the line intersects the y-axis and where x is 0. So let's go up and figure out our intercept. This is not correct because um, our intercept wouldn't be in grams. We're not measuring in grams. So we have to look at our intercept. It's minus 344 centimeters. I'm going to copy that and see if I can just paste that into question number 7. So let's turn our intercept into a statement. The blank is blank when the blank is zero. So the quantity on the vertical axis, we decided that's position in centimeters. That's what it says on our graph, the vertical axis of our graph. Um, the intercept value with unit is what we put for question seven. So is negative 334 centimeters when the quantity on the horizontal axis is zero. So when the seconds, when the time in seconds is zero. Does our intercept make sense? Well, kind of. Um, uh, we are, uh, we didn't actually start measuring the ping pong ball, like, as it started out of the cannon. There's some, uh, some of the uh, the acceleration and the velocity of the ping pong ball happened when it was still in the cannon. So it shows that um, our position is a little off. So normally a graph wouldn't have an intercept of 0.334 centimeters in real life because there is no negative 334 centimeters uh, when we're measuring in real life unless the things are going backwards, but it basically just means the ping pong ball was in the cannon when the timer was started. We could not measure the whole distance. So let's write out the equation of our um, best fit. So we have y, let's look at the general equation, y equals mx plus b, or in our case, it's going to be y is equal to 20,400 times x plus b, I'll put that in parentheses because it's negative, 34. All right, an object's change in position for every one second is defined as velocity. The velocity will also be the slope of the object's position versus time graph. How does the ping pong ball's velocity before it collided with the can compare to its velocity after it collided with the ping can? Give your answer as a CER. That's claim, evidence, and reasoning. So our claim is going to answer the question. Let's go up and answer the question. So it looks like um, if the ping pong ball just kept going without hitting the can, it'd be, its slope is above the slope of the line if we drew a line through after the can. So the slope is really steep, and then it's not so steep um, when it's after it hits the can. So it's steep, up, 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 
when before it hits the can and then if we just drew a line through after it hit the can it's not quite as steep so it makes sense that it's not as steep because it hits the can and when something's going very fast and it hits something we know just from real life it's going to slow down like you know if you're playing croquet or bowling or um, if a car runs into something or um, if you're you know playing with your toy cars and they smash into another toy car uh, they're going to slow down So let's go back and do a claim. So claim the ping pong ball slowed down. Evidence, I'm gonna let you figure out the evidence. Use what you saw on the graph and what we talked about. And reasoning, explain the evidence. Why do the slopes of the lines make a difference? Why does that matter in answering this question? All right, that's it. Um, you can turn in your pivot assignment and be done. Thanks so much for listening. This is Dr. B signing out from Ping Pong Ball Bazooka.